Hello, I'm Lee. I am Lee Holder at work and Lee Chaos at play. That's me dressed as a train. We're going to move on very quickly from that. Um, I'm a music hacker. I don't consider myself a musician. My entire history with music has been around hacking the world to make it work for me because conventional instruments are not great. And that's one of the things I'm going to talk very briefly about before I introduce the instrument that we've got here. I'm a they, them. I'm a neurodiverse, non-binary and bad with labels, but I say those things out loud now rather than keeping them a little bit to myself because I think it's helpful for people to know that. That's me in 1987, we think. It is the beigest photo of me you will ever see. Uh, me playing around with one of my first ever synthesizers, the Sequential Circuits Pro 1, which was the gateway for me doing a whole bunch of other things. And even then, you can see there's some dangerous wiring on the floor, um, a lot of flat pack furniture in my life. So it's how did I get from there to here is one of the things that I'm going to talk about very briefly and who I brought with me. So I got started um, in uh, with, with music by um, originally kind of tinkering around with things. And one of my earliest memories was singing along to the sound of a vacuum cleaner when I was really little um, and sort of working out all the harmonies and at that point I knew that music was a presenting to me in a completely different way to a lot of other people. Um, so that was one of my very earliest music memories and I remember going through school and just feeling like music was something that was happening for other people in a way that it wasn't for me. I've never been able to read music, I'm musically dyslexic, I still can't read music now despite the fact that I've been teaching it for some decades as well. Um, so you'll see from that picture there of me playing the guitar. Um, I really wanted to be in a guitar and I wanted to be in bands that made a lot of noises and guitars just don't work for me. My hands are the wrong size, they're the wrong shape. I can't grip my hand round to make the chords the same way as everybody else. It's physically painful for me to do so. So I tuned up a guitar differently and started to build my own guitars, hack other people's guitars, use different sets of strings. And that's been my approach for a lot of the things that I've done with music throughout my entire life has been taking things and using them in ways that work for me, much to the annoyance of people who use them in other ways who continually tell me I'm wrong, but I don't really care at this point because I've got this far already. And that's been the same for MIDI as well. So I've been uh, using a lot of MIDI apparatus. Oh, my titles have gone a bit wonky there. Let's not worry about that. Um, using MIDI so that I can get the ideas out of my head um, and into the real world, which I have to do piece by piece. So as soon as I started to get the hang of MIDI, um, it started to open up a whole world of possibility for me. And quite often I was sort of working against um, the way that I play instruments, having to put things in note by note um, and having to work out ways that I could set things up so that they would play the ideas that were in my head in a way that they weren't necessarily designed for. So I did a whole bunch of kind of exploratory work with that. And that's the approach that I brought into accessible instruments before I even knew that that was a thing, that that was a career that I could get myself involved in. Um, I built a thing, I kind of hacked apart this thing. This is what the inside of a thing called a mind flex. What a mind flex does, this is one of the first things that I kind of like pulled apart and when I was starting to explore things like um, circuit bending. Um, a mind flex takes your EEG brain waves and what it does in its normal form as a toy is make a little ball go up and down with a fan. And I realized that I could read the speed of the fan and use that to output MIDI data. And this was amazing. This was something that I was just playing around with um, while I was a slightly bored FE lecturer, to be perfectly honest. Um, and I decided that I'd have a go at hacking my own instrument. And this is what I came up with. And as a result of that, we ended up doing some really interesting stuff with performance artists who were using that in their performance art and meeting a whole bunch of really interesting people. Um, so one of the things I was asked to build was to use the MindFlex, but also build a MIDI T service that was at the center of a piece of performance art. And the way that that worked was used a bunch of different sensors. So we had like proximity sensors, we had light sensors, we had sensors that would weigh how much a cake or a teapot had inside it and turn all that into music and sort of operate some faders. I think I've got a short video of that. Let's see if it works. Ah, okay. see if we can make it work otherwise I can just talk about it anyway it yep let's see is it giving us any video no okay we can probably we can probably imagine that one <laughs> it was working earlier yeah it's always it's often the way of things okay this is always the fun bit There we go. We love the M lab. It's all about tech. 
That's all right. I'm going to skip that video anyway. Basically, I, I built a T-service that had a whole bunch of sensors in it. And then halfway through that, it'll, it'll get it, some of the videos a bit later on. I'm, I probably need to show a bit. But um, then I found out that I could take this into schools and start doing some work. So the little black box that we've got there, you would have seen in the video, um, takes in a whole bunch of sensors into the real world and allows you to plug in analog and digital sensors into it. Um, and I started to realize that this work was really, really valuable to people who... Um, can't access conventional instruments for whatever reason. So I started to change career a little bit. I, took, I stopped being a, a board FE lecturer and started reskilling in a whole bunch of like community music practice and started to learn a bit more about how these gadgets work inside and how I can make them work for people who've got disabilities or for whatever reason don't get on with conventional instruments. Um, the other thing I started exploring, oh, this is not going awful well, is it? There we go, um, is, um, is cheap game technology as well. So looking at buttons and joysticks and finding out ways that I can bring those bits of technology into things and then combining those together. So a bit of hand-built tech, a bit of um, recycled tech, using things that are pretty much abandoned by other people um, is, is something that I'm, I'm really keen on doing. And then eventually managed to find a way of building a job out of that effectively, which has given me the freedom to do some of the more exploratory work that I've done. So I now work for an organization called The Music Works. Um, and uh, I am, among other things, the disability lead. So we do a lot of kind of like work with uh, people who find it challenging to access um, instruments or music in other ways. Um, and this gives me the space to kind of do a little bit more um, development work. So we then got a little bit of seed funding from an organization called I've Got an Idea. Um, and we started to build um, our first gadget that was specifically based on... Um, covering a niche in the market that I didn't think was covered, which was around kind of like wearable technology. We had a few people who like were, were struggling um, with the technologies that already existed. We kind of had a good knowledge of things like Soundbeam. We had some knowledge of the stuff that I'd built through work as well. And there was something that we didn't feel um, existed. And that was something around kind of like moving a hand and being able to tilt and control things around an ex accelerometer based thing. So the first um, thing that I built for the Music Works was something called um, the, uh, we just called it like the Sound Gadget version one. Um, and originally we had grand ideas of kind of fitting this into a glove and having fingers that clenched. And then we went back and started working with people um, from one of the supported living centers that we work with quite regularly and realized that even getting a glove on was going to take up half the session that we had. So we, we went back to the drawing board and came up with a gadget. Now this video I am going to need to show. Um, is it possible to, to get that one sorted out? But I can show this in the meantime. This was the gadget that we built. Um, so not the glove at all, but designed to be worn on the wrist. Um, it's got a small switch inside it, on, on the side of it. There we go. That allows you to put in any accessible switch that you've got. And the idea with this was that it, we'd make these affordable and be able to drop them off with centers so that they could have a play with them. And the way that this works is that it's, it's based on a cartridge. So each person could have their own cartridge that had its own settings on. And inside that is a small BBC micro bit board, which has got the accelerometers that we've needed. And the idea being that each person would have one of these and we'd have one base unit, which contains the batteries as well. So the whole thing is self-contained. You clip it in. And by moving the hand up and down, you'd be able to um, either generate sounds with the onboard beeper that's on here or go out and start doing some MIDI stuff. Ah, brilliant. We've got the video. Fantastic. We can just play this. This one it's just me kind of like commentating because this is from a live session so we'll just do the video and this is showing um, there we are a chap called Dom that I work with um, learning how to use this first sound gadget uh, by lifting his hand up and practicing with this so it's a selection of short videos and we we're trying different switches with him as well to work out which one was the best and whether it was best to have it in his in, his, in the one hand or the other hand it allowed us to do some really rapid prototyping in the session squeeze and lift your hand up that's it squeeze it Dude, that's incredible. There we go. We'll move, we'll move on to the next slide, if we may. <laughs> Magic stuff.
There we go. Hello, am I still there? Am I still there? Yeah, fantastic. Sorry. Right. Okay. So that that was the, that was the first thing that we we built with um, uh, through the Music Works. We worked with um, uh, a product design company called uh, Phoenix, who just happened to be on the ground floor below us. Um, sorry, the first floor below us, um, and they helped us with some of the 3D printing. But the idea being that we would open source this. Um, so we've got a version here, and I'm happy to share this already. So this is a version where, like, the coding at the moment, I felt like we did we didn't really have anybody who knew what they were doing with coding. I knew enough to get it working about that much but that was about as much as we worked it we managed to do it and now it's not going to go on oh here we go so where am i on my presentation now um let's let's go forward anyway so i'm going to i'm going to show a little video um this is uh, uh andy who comes in to do our regular sessions and we introduced uh, sound gadgets version one to him um, and it ended up taking us on quite an extraordinary journey. So I just thought I'd share the video for this as part of my presentation now before I talk about what we've been working on at the moment. Now, is that video going to work? There we go. Ah. My name's Lee Holder. I'm the disability lead at the Music Works. I'm Dave, so I'm Andy's key worker. Well, I'm Andy's mum, Andrea. My name's Glenn Pettigrove, Andrew Pettigrove's father. Andy is really determined. He's got a wicked sense of humour. That's how he kind of endears himself to other people. Works hard at everything, puts his mind to. If you tell him that he can't do something, he's going to try harder. He's always been interested in music, but didn't really have a way to engage in it. So he's registered blind and doesn't really have the use of his hands or legs, so he's wheelchair bound. My job is partly to make sure that the music activities that we do at the Music Works are as inclusive as they can possibly be. When Andy came into the space, one of the things that he really wanted to do was to just hear his music as loud as we could possibly make it. One of the support workers had found out that Andy had got a real love not only for heavy metal music, but also a genre of music called Frenchcore, which is this ridiculously fast 200 BPM dance music. You can tell as soon as he hears a piece of music that he likes, he's really animated about it. So we used that as like the starting point with our music. We knew that Andy had a way of communicating when he was really enjoying something. Through experimenting with the kind of music he liked, just use that as a way of building up a kind of understanding of what Andy was capable of doing. We're working with very, very fine movements to start with. So Andy moving, you know, sort of literally being able to move his finger like half a centimetre and then turning those into musical gestures. I made sure I was on every Thursday and be a consistent factor because I know Andy, but they know the gear. So the way that Andy's rig works is that we use an existing piece of DJ software, but Andy controls it with a camera called a Tracker Pro. That's an infrared camera that sits on top of the iPad. It works out where Andy is looking from a little reflective dot that's currently in the middle of a pair of goggles that Andy wears. And that allows the iPad to sense which direction Andy is looking. And when Andy's DJing, he's then able to make choices on the screen. My goal was to get Andy to a point where he can engage in music and enjoy it, and him to just be set up to do it by himself. Andy joined our DJ collective session, started to meet other adults with learning difficulties who were working as DJing. And then we had an offer to provide some acts for Happy Fest, which is a festival that had performers and was designed for uh, people with additional needs. How they've actually got to, to where they are, I just find that fascinating. I will go away feeling happy because I know that I can not only leave Andy in the, the level of care that he gets, but people who are interested in doing the things that he likes doing. they have got such passion, it's, it's brilliant. Everyone's so proud of him. really can't believe how he's doing this. They wrote him off. Um, all these very clever people wrote him off. And um, now to see him and to be really happy doing something is just incredible. <laughs> And his story is a perfect example of what we can do where multi-agency approaches work really, really well and everybody, is, it's all joined up. He has a purpose. You know, I have a purpose. I, it's had such a big impact. Lee and the team have brought some out in him I never thought I'd see. It's been brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Just going to draw attention to when Andy's excited, his leg goes up in the air. Um, and that was the starting point for everything. I didn't say that in the video, but that was the point where we, attacked, we were able to attach this and we knew that when Andy was excited, his leg would come up. And that was the only movement he had. Um, Andy's gone on to some fantastic stuff as a result of this. I wonder how I get out of this now. Um, 
and has gone on to, um, uh, as a result of the work that we've done with him, it's now started using his communicator, which he didn't really have a reason to do before. Um, and it's now starting to work on composing his own music and putting his own um, performance together. There we go. That's perfect. Right. OK. Um, I've got a bit of a confession to make on the next one. So we applied for um, to make our second Sound Gadgets instrument um, with Drake Music. Um, and I came up with this prototype. But the prototype is based on an alarm clock, which I'm going to show you here. I'm always on the lookout for bits of accessible tech and stuff which is effectively junk from car boot sales that I can use in music sessions. And this one was absolutely compelling. There we go, and turn it on. It's got a rather sinister voice. But the way it works is that you put pieces on it to, to create little bits of music, which is lovely. It's an alarm clock, but I'd found that working with uh, people, especially those on the autistic spectrum who like to have a more game-based approach to music making, this was madly engaging for them. It was really, really exciting. So I wanted to build my own. That's a completely sealed box. Go, go to sleep now. There we go. I'll switch it off, otherwise it will keep saying that creepy voice to me throughout the entire presentation. Um, so I wanted to create something that then would, would be something that we could expand and grow. So the idea came up for this one, which originally I called the Sparkboard, and it was based on the idea of using RFID tags and creating a completely open-ended system um, to, uh, to create music and to output MIDI. Um, there we go. That was my inspiration, so I've talked about that. Um, but for this one, I didn't want to build it myself. Uh, we were really fortunate in that I'd got in contact with a local hack space. And one of the guys there had just retired and actually approached the Music Works and said, is there anything I can do from a voluntary point of view that would be really helpful? And I said, yes, please, come and help us with this project. So I'd really stalled on this. It was way above what I thought I was capable of. So I've been working with a chap called Andy, who's been absolutely amazing at getting this project from my idea down to a, to a real world thing. Um, and we've actually got the first example here. It's sketchy at the moment. We are very much at the prototype stage, but I'm going to plug it in and see what happens. It'll do some lovely lights if it's working. There we go. Isn't that pretty? There we go. And the idea with this one now is called the Calliope, if it goes through its sequence. There we go. You can see a light tracking across. And what it does is it then reads each of these RFID sensors in turn. And then we can code up tags or cards so that they will play a note or a sequence of notes or a chord when it gets to that. And the lovely thing about this is it's completely open-ended, so we can make it so it does anything at all. It can send out MIDI CC data, it can send out note values. So if I put this on here, there's probably a small chance that it will work. Let's find out. Is it lighting up yet? There we go. There we go. So the first tag is doing a D, but it also means that we can then swap that around and play a chord if we want to. We've just got these set up so they're arbitrarily either chords or single notes. There we go. And with this, the plan is that we can then program that up so that you can have any sequence. So you could use it for songwriting. You could literally shuffle a deck of cards, put down four values, and use that as the starting point for a song. You can tell it's only doing it every now and again at the moment because we're still in the testing phase. But that's the idea. Is so for people can use that to then build a game. We can use that so it triggers samples. We can use it so it puts down you know, big air horn sounds. We can use it using the experience we've got of working with Andy. So it's triggering, you know, whole sequences of music. So we can use that, that card-based system so that we can create whole pieces of music. But it's open-ended, so we can do whatever we want with this. Um, and it's really lovely to bring this to the room because I know there will be people right now sat there going, I know what we can use that for, that, things that I haven't thought about at the moment. So that's where we're at at the moment. That's the end of my presentation. Um, thank you very much indeed. Um, for uh, listening to me. And if I, one of the lovely things about being in this room is I know this is going to be the start of lots of great conversations as well. So thank you very much indeed. I'm happy to take any questions from people. Thank you. Oh, amazing. Thanks, Lee. Um, are, are there any questions in the room? Oh, we have, I think we have Nicola. Hello, that was really interesting. Thank you so much. It's great to hear about your work. And um, I really liked your comment that you said about um, how um, people on the autistic, on the autism spectrum uh, had a play approach to music. And I wondered if you could say a little bit more about that. 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's not everyone because the, the spectrum varies wildly. For some autistic people, having a set of rules is brilliant. For others that we're working with, they just want to come in and play and the music feels like it's secondary. And that was something that I kind of found out by using this, this weird gadget here. It's called a Zazzle Zounds, if you can find them on eBay. And they're, they're really good fun as like first access instruments. And I noticed that when the young person that I, I based this on was playing it, he put all the shapes down one by one and he'd go, right, okay, let's make them have a battle. Let's work out, and in his mind, it was kind of almost like a game of chess. It was like, let's have a battle about which sounds are best on which squares, shall we? And then we'll put them all together. Um, and we played other like weird musical games as well. And I was like, instruments kind of like force you to think a certain way. It's like a guitar insists that you put your fingers in a certain configuration to play it. As I mentioned before, the piano kind of like assumes that you're gonna have 10 fingers and you're gonna be able to put them in a certain space, which I've never been able to do. So with this one, I just wanted to create something and go, go, this is more like that kind of weird, you know, like the Skylanders thing that you get on the Xbox or the little Lego dimensions things that you put down. And I just love the fact that it was open-ended. I could then go away and configure this and go, right, okay, we've actually got like lines of dialogue that you can play with this. You can put down a card and that can be an actual character. And we could configure that as part of our play as well. And then we could build a song around that. So I just love the, the idea of just having an instrument that doesn't conform at all to any kind of like musical paradigm that exists. The initial uh, diagram I did, we were based on a hexagon. And the reason for that was I thought we could read it in a variety of directions. So rather than it being a grid that you assumed moved left to right in a conventional fashion, we could have it doing columns or rows or diagonals, or we could have it move, choosing them at random. So we've still got that in the back of our mind. We've just got to get four work before we do the rather ambitious 32 that I was thinking we'd be able to do. But for me, it's, it's about like play first, music second, and then kind of like moving into what sounds good, what can we explore, what, you know, what, where do we go from here? I hope that answers your question. I go off on one when I get asked. I hope that's okay. Amazing thing. So we, we've actually we've had a request online to see if we can get the, the instrument on camera, but I'm just wondering if the cables are going to be long enough to move it any closer. Let's, where's the camera? The camera's just there. Do you know what? Ah, I'm, looks just, I'm just going to gonna pick up my entire laptop. She wanted to carry that. Sure. There, oh, look at that. Beautiful. <laughs> okay, we can do it. Do you want to there we go. Describe it as well, Leo. So, so really yes, good. absolutely. So it is an oblong box. Um, it has four RFID sensors, which are where the red lights are. And the idea is that it will read each of those cards in sequence. Um, you can then speed it up and slow it down. Um, it will, when it works, um, be reading the speed of other things on the computer as well. So it will take MIDI clock in. So we could have like a drum loop and then put individual notes or chords by dropping on the uh, tags or cards onto that. What's that? Is that good? Oh, it looks good on camera, doesn't it? Yeah, great. It's great. Yeah. Fabulous. Excellent. How, how are we doing for time? I wonder, because I, I, think, I think we have, what, do we have another question in the room? Zen? Yes. Uh, I just... Sorry. Hello, Lee. That was really interesting. Hi. Thank you. You mentioned that the person that you're working with, when they're interested in it they lift their leg up mm -hmm. could you maybe incorporate that into the performance itself maybe make some kind of a leg arousal sensor oh absolutely yeah yeah we're, we're looking at doing that about having something like output cc data our, our, our view is to have it so it opens a filter and then if he gets it up really really high it sets off an air horn sound because uh. he loves the loud sound so absolutely in fact we've we've done a bit of work about uh, considering how our work ties into physiotherapy and therapeutic work as well. Uh, we've started to do more exploration of things like um, singing for breathing is something that we're working with, working on as an organization as well. But yeah, we're very, very interested in, in that kind of thing. We had a, a physiotherapist came in and watched one of our sessions and said that the people we were working with are automatically doing things that it takes them half an hour of coercing to get them to do for 10 minutes. So there's definitely more links there. Um, in actual fact, just opposite where we're based in Gloucester, there's um, going to be a university campus that is based on physiotherapy. So our long term view on this is that we can perhaps do some collaborative work about um, how our music making with assisted technology ties into physiotherapeutic benefits. Amazing. Thanks, Lee. Um, so I think I think we'll end it there, but I, I mean, I, I can't wait to see how this progresses and how all of these amazing things tie together, which sounds like it's going to be a really kind of fascinating performance system. So uh, can we just give Lee one more round of applause? Thank you.